Hello and welcome to this week's episode. Before we get into it in detail, I wanted to thank Kevin Weber for giving the podcast a five-star review. You can find a link to my fascinating conversation with Kevin, as known as Dead Man Running, on the show notes for today's episode. So let's get back to today's guest, and I'm really pleased to share with you a conversation I had with the founder of Blue Tree Savings, Will Rainey, all the way from Vietnam. Will has been living in Vietnam with his young family since 2019 after making the life-changing decision to quit corporate life. The move was made possible by his lifelong habit of saving and investing, which gave him an idea for a new business. Having been an investment consultant and an actuary, Will now focuses his attention on helping parents and grandparents to teach their children and grandchildren about money. Will now focuses his attention on helping parents and grandparents to teach their children and grandchildren about money through his business Blue Tree Savings and his recently published book. In our conversation, we chat about the work of Blue Tree Savings, Will's book, Grandpa's Fortune Fables, and the power of stories to engage and educate young minds. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Will. Welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast, Will Rainey. Well, thank you for having me. Nice to, nice to be on the show. Yeah, really good. Really, really looking forward to our chat. Um, for those who don't know you, Will, tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm uh, an actuary for my sins. Oh, um, for those who, who might not know what an actuary is, it's essentially someone who's like an accountant but loves statistics. So does, does lots of uh, financial statistics about pensions and insurance and investments as well. Um, so I did that in the UK uh, and then I worked for a large consultancy firm helping different retirement schemes and then in 2014 I got a job opportunity to work in Hong Kong wow. and so d- doing a similar kind of role working with insurance companies and retirement schemes, uh, sovereign wealth funds all around Asia which was amazing um, but then in 2019 my wife and I did a bit of a, a a life change and we we kind of left our full-time jobs in Hong Kong and moved the family to Vietnam where I'm speaking to you now so I'm looking out at rice paddy fields and water buffalo um, amazing and, yeah, had decided to to start something a bit new and sort of focus on helping parents teach their kids about money wow wow what a story what a story I, I'm afraid I do want you to turn the camera around and I want to see the buffalo and the rice paddy fields but I don't know whether you can do that so. <laughs> try not, not, not to say that you're look at this it really is it really is true amazing fantastic so um well that's a you know that's a uh, that's a hell of a story so um tell tell me a little bit about uh life in Vietnam yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. It's so different from the uh, big cities of London and uh, and Hong Kong, where there's just so much abundance of everything and everything costs a lot of money. Whereas here, we don't have a car. We have little scooters that we go around town on. Um, we integrate so much with uh, the Vietnamese people. So it's not like we're in like a commune of just expats. We're our neighbours are. Of, of Vietnamese and we're looking at them doing some sort of farming right now as I think they're growing peanuts um, and so yeah no it's just it's so relaxed and everyone's just kind of really helpful and kind and we're looking out and I've got the the sea um, not very far away and so yeah no it's just yes yeah, just so different but yeah the wow. people here are just so friendly so kind amazing. so helpful um, yeah. yeah amazing so um so you obviously left the actuarial world behind, but you're on a bit of a mission in a couple of other areas. So tell me about Blue Tree Savings. Yeah, so Blue Tree Savings is all about helping parents teach their kids about money. So right. it does some, well, we'll talk a bit later about a book which helps children directly learn about money. But my main prerogative was to yeah, give parents the resources to A, learn about money themselves, mm. but in such a simple way that they could teach their kids. So I'm hoping to teach both parents and children about money through this way, because there's just not many resources out there that help parents. And I think that I was very, very fortunate. I learned a lot from my parents and 
uh, the opportunity to be able to leave full-time work and have this opportunity to spend time with my young kids and, and move to a different part of the world is because I've been able to, my wife and I have been saving and investing for, for many years. And so we have that financial security to be able to have this opportunity. And I want this for my children. So I thought, all right, I'm going to start doing that for my children. And yeah. Yeah, so recently, saving started out of that, writing blogs, speaking at uh, companies to help people uh, learn about money in the, the most simplest of terms, because clearly the, the, the lowest common denominator is, is young children who've never been taught anything. But in the same case, most of the parents haven't either. No, no. I mean, um, yeah, it is. a It's kind of a dark art, isn't it? Unless you've been involved in that world. Um I was uh, I was relating a story on a, a talk that I was doing um, uh, locally in Bournemouth to um, to a group of solicitors the other week, and I was explaining that how uh, I, I've obviously had the benefit of um, understanding how investment markets work and and what have you. And our, um, we've got two children, uh, ten and twelve, two two girls, Kathy and I, and. Um, their grandparents uh, from Kathy's side decided when they were born that they would like to give a little bit of money each month. Uh, you know, uh, 500 pounds, I think, which is very generous right at the beginning when they were both born and then and then a small amount every month thereafter. And of course, as you can imagine, I popped off to the um, local kind of um, uh, investment fund that I, that I, that I, the equity investment fund uh, invest, invested in the well-run companies of the world and um, started contributing this amount of money into their little fund. Um, uh, and the same, the same thing happened for, uh, the, the same generous gift was also given to Kathy's sister, um, who, who was going through kind of a difficult time, a difficult time when, when the children were uh, early, early days. And she opened a building society account for them um, and, and started depositing that money in there thereafter and then you know her sister had a kind of a more challenging relationship and that sadly fell apart and and, and life's been pretty pretty tough and pretty difficult for her and she's um beautifully come out the other side of all that and the kids are great and everything's fantastic but actually if you look at it economically um the building society account that she's religiously saved well in for her for her, for her three three kids um and and will provide a really nice lump sum for them um, our, our two have significantly benefited from the, that money going into an investment account rather than a building society account, you know, and, and, and it's kind of, it, it feels slightly unfair um, <laughs> that the, 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 the one child should benefit from the other in, in it, it, through no skill of their own, but just because in essence, one parent had a little bit of knowledge um, uh, and, and thought that was the right thing. Um, and, and, and the other didn't. Yeah. No, it's so, so important. And it's not just the, the knowledge, it's the action that you took <laughs> to put that money there. Because, um, and I think that's, because when I first started, so I had, a, when I was doing the actuarial side, I was doing investments. So I had a good knowledge on that. And so when I first started Blue Tree, it was all going to be about getting parents to save, just because that same notion there, you just give them such a, an advantage. So from birth, 18 years of compound interest before they even start is, <laughs> is a huge, huge advantage. But then the, the more I kind of did with research and talking to parents, et cetera, a lot of it is there is about that knowledge, but it's just so much in terms of uh, behaviors and habits to get to start that off. Because <laughs> as you say, most, especially coming from where we both come from in terms of this financial bit, I know a lot of people who have all the knowledge <laughs> as you do about investing, but still don't, not for themselves, not for their families. So it's that not just the knowledge, it's the knowledge and the action. And that's why I've been so passionate about when been doing this blue tree stuff is, is trying to get parents to not just read and learn, but take action. And that's yes. be just the starting to save, because again, that's a very, very big positive uh, from, but also right now do something even more and start setting up that investment account and getting that compound interest working. And uh, yeah, and it just makes such a difference. And once the kids kind of learn and see that through their, so your, your daughters will, will see that compound interest. So when they get to 18, they know it works. <laughs> and then they want to hopefully continue doing that with their own money uh, thereafter. Yes, absolutely. And, and, you know, and I so slowly and boring. That yeah. Most people go, oh, I can't be bothered with this. <laughs> but once you kind of see it, you're like, oh, I'm hooked now. I want more. I want more. <laughs> 
Yes, yes. And I often explain it, you know, we're often, we're, we're invested in the well-run companies of the world, you know, we're, we've got a little bit of Apple, and they get quite excited by that. We've got a little bit of Amazon, they get excited by that. We've got a little bit of everyone, to be honest. Um, you know, uh, but, 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 but it's just quite nice to go, you know, you own a little bit of that company, you know. Um, so, so this, this, this key thing here, so we've got the knowledge aspect, but, but you, 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 you hit the, the kind of nail on the head of how, how are you encouraging people to take action? Yeah, so this is um, something I've been really passionate. So, because what before, um, when I was looking at this topic, I was like, oh, do I go into schools? And I thought that's, so A, there's some really good charities already doing that. So you've got My Bank and Red Star and, and Young Money. Um, and that's all about tr knowledge. And you're hoping that if people are knowledgeable, they'll take an action. So I know something, therefore. But we kind of know that doesn't always work. We look at good eating. We all know <laughs> unhealthy foods, but we still eat them and we still drink alcohol. And <laughs> some people smoke, even though they know all the, the bad stuff. So what I've been doing is trying to help parents understand that actions are just so, so important. And so whenever their child sort of kind of first thing I get all parents to do is to say, whenever your child gets some money, no matter how small, get them to save just a little bit. It doesn't. And even if it's like they get 10, uh, two pounds, get them to save 20p, put it away and keep doing that so that when their children grow up, they just do it out of habit. And it's all about these habits. And so that's my first thing. And it's all about that action. And it doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be hard. It just has to be consistent. And the younger you start doing that, the more and more likely your child is going to grow up financially healthy and wealthy. And, and all parents can do that. It's not like, oh, you have to be good with numbers. You have to have lots of money. You have to be well-educated. No, no, no. You can, every, every single parent can get their child whenever they get some money from two fairy Christmas birthday, just get them to save that little bit. And it's that action that is so, so much more important than, four textbooks work of, of knowledge but no action there so uh, what is it the what is it the what the, you know if people are listening to this uh what is the next step that you'd like them to take yeah so the what i thought of just what i do with parents is i try and get them to think of of money uh being like a seed right. and say so when children think of that they straight away they can kind of get that you can give seeds away and that's like spending but at the other side of it is that they can uh, go, well, what does it mean when I plant those seeds? And that's just like savings. A, you're teaching them savings. But then it's the case of right, when you plant them, you want them to grow and grow into trees. So we, for my children, we call them blue trees and hence, we, the company's called Blue Tree Savings. Yes. And it's all about growing this kind of what I call a financial forest or fortune forest and having this kind of mental image. And this is uh, leads to kind of my, how do you grow that forest? And you kind of go through these kind of three rules, which I go with, with parents. It's the first one is whenever your children get money or seeds, make sure they say one out of every 10, which is what we talked about. The second is to help them grow. And then it comes to what does that mean? And that's helping children learn about that money can grow. And that's about investing. And then with my daughters, I did exactly what you did and said, I think we we're in McDonald's in Hong Kong. And I said, because we invest in lots of companies, you own a piece of this McDonald's. All those people over there, queuing up are going to get a little bit poorer because they're going to hand over their money mcdonald's is going to get richer and you own a piece of mcdonald's so that money ultimately is a little bit of yours and they got like you're so so excited about it but they also understood how money can grow because it goes from those people goes to mcdonald's mcdonald's is owned by people those people are investors and those people are getting richer and so they could see how that that growth story works but the last one and the next step for parents is about patience. I think it's it's so underrated or talked about. But essentially, if you want your children to be financially healthy and wealthy, they have to be patient. <laughs> we know that it takes time for compound interest to work. We know that if you're not patient, you can get targeted by scams and debt and gambling. And so helping your children understand that when they plant the seed, they're not going to wake up tomorrow and there's going to be this big tree sitting in the garden. <laughs> they know that it takes time. And that's exactly what we want uh, with children when they're thinking about money and help parents when they're helping their children is to help their kids understand that it takes time. But if you do, then you're going to have this forest and it's, it's the this forest that no one gets to see. So you can't go out and just because someone's got a big flashy house or a big flashy car doesn't mean they've got a big forest. <laughs> Most of the time, those people don't have a forest at all. But, um, uh, but that's the, that should be their goal. So, yeah, so the next step is 
save, invest, and then be patient. Mm, brilliant. Wise words. Wise words. So you, you so you've put all this down in a book. Well, you've all this kind of wisdom into a book, a uh, book aimed at children um, with a number of kind of fables. Tell me more about, um, well, grandpa's fortune fables, in fact. Um, tell me more about that. Yeah, sure. So it all started. So I've been writing um, blogs every week for the last two years, and they cover just a different topic to help parents teach their kids about money. And sometimes I use analogies, sometimes I use little games to say, like, here's this is how you learn it, and this is how you can talk to your kids. And in some of that, I had a number of stories. And so I had a collection of these different stories, which weren't all linked to start with. But I thought, oh, and there was a, kind of a request for parents to say, can we put them into a book? And so, yeah, so that's exactly what I did. I put these little mini stories, which cover different topics, into a book, changed them around. So they all had the like, same characters and, and just kind of themes. But the whole book is kind of based on this young girl who's the granddaughter of a very wealthy man, her, her grandfather. And so she meets this new friend and kind of goes through how her grandpa, grandpa became really wealthy by these kind of stories that of him going to a faraway island and kind of using that seed analogy and kind of had nothing to start with but learned how to look after his and grew this forest and how she's kind of using that to build her own wealth and so children can kind of follow the actions that this little girl has taken based on the kind of advice of her grandpa mm. but it covers like lots of different topics so it starts off with the difference between rich and wealthy which i think is, is just so so important talks about earning money it talks about uh, investing money and those free rules that i mentioned earlier it also covers topics like tax and charity all using stories or fables as i call them in here which hopefully a bit like uh, aesop's fables where even if children might not always instantly connect like the uh, the boy who cried wolf to the moral they will remember the story and then over time uh, they'll kind of put the two together and that's what i hope with this book yeah. So it's kind of aimed at sort of seven to 13 to read on their own, but it's kind of written that lots of parents can read it with their younger children. And I really encourage that they do so because the stories in here, most many parents probably will learn something from uh, is, is the aim. Absolutely. And, and I think, um, you know, it, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because money can be treated as a, you know, or wealth can be treated as a kind of a dirty word nowadays, but actually we all know that, that the financial resources, if, if a youngster has got financial resources as they enter into the world, it, it, it just supports them, doesn't it? It supports them, other, whether it's education. And I, and I read about it, what going on in America and the amount of debt that, that, that students have. I mean, it, it kind of is not as bad in the UK, but it's a, you know, it's a similar story. Um, and, you know, the, the, the cost, of, cost of getting onto a, um, the housing ladder in, in, in any country nowadays is, is significant. These are, these are big challenges, aren't they, faced as soon as you actually just enter into the, what I suppose, maybe the real world, you know, out of the cosetness of your family and you're suddenly fending for yourself. So therefore, if you've had some gift of financial resources to allow you to move into the world with a little bit more ease, it can give you a significant leg up, can't it? Yes. I, one caveat to that, though, is it has to, those resources plus the education together. And I think that's the, the big piece because I've throughout this, my experience over the last two years of talking to, to different families, one of the biggest fears that they have is that they kind of, they've been saving for their, their child or their grandchild and they're going to hand this over at 18 or whatever age and then the, the fear that their child is going to go and spend it so there's yeah. one where it's a, a grand a grandpa mum uh, yeah, grand, uh, mother and she handed over and then the next day the grandson uh spent it all on gold teeth <laughs> and she you can imagine her horror <laughs> that's not exactly what she wanted that money for so but yeah no if children can get that education about how to look after money and get some financial resources from parents or grandparents or wider family it's just such an advantage because yeah. the saddest thing is you have these children who have the the biggest advantage in all of finance which is time but yet most of that is is eradicated by a huge debts when they're they're 18 or 21 and that kind of loses all that superpower but so the more that they have those resources and that knowledge gives them such a head start and they can really take advantage of that, that superpower of being young and having 
a huge time frame for uh, for compound interest. So, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, this definitely sounds like um, uh, this could be a, a a book for people's gifts this maybe Christmas time. Um, we, I'm not sure when this is coming out yet, so we may have missed that. But definitely birthdays, and definitely for for parents and children to read. Um, I, I I think I read that someone had given 21 gifts out as a as a, as a birthday a birthday party presents. Yeah, so that was fantastic. Yeah, someone said that they they just hated the gift bags with all the the sweets and the, the cheap stationery and the little yo-yos. And they yeah they bought um, fifteen books um, for the kids as a kind of replacement for party bags, which is fantastic. Amazing. I've heard, I've heard others saying that they're going to do the same, which is amazing because it's. I do believe that it's a, it's a fun book. Uh, so it's really? not like it's a it's a textbook, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> no. it's it's a fun book, and it has it can make a real big impact and, and get the sort of conversation started in the home. Um, so yeah, good for the parents. And good no, I kids. love it. I mean, I have dug into it, and um, uh, I've read a couple, and I think it's a, a fantastic. So Grandpa's Fortune Fables, maybe it's on your uh, gift list for 2022. Where where can people find more about you, and where they where they can buy the book? Well. Yeah, so my website is at bluetreesavings.com. So you can find all about the book there. It's sold on Amazon. Um, so you can buy it in paperback, hardback, or, or ebook. Most people are kind of going because it's a kid's book going for uh, a physical copy rather than the digital copy. But yeah, if people are, are thinking about multiple copies, whether for clients or, or for colleagues or friends, then yeah, come to come to the website and you can get a discount on, on bulk orders, which has been fantastic in terms of the number of people who have been doing that for their schools, et cetera, as well. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, I think you're on a great mission, Will. I really, um, or or power to you because I think it's a, it's a great message that you're trying to get out there and, um, could really enhance, uh, the future generations lives. So, um, all power to you for that. And, um, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, Thank you so much for having me on the show and, and supporting this. Yeah. Very important topic. Brilliant. Thanks, Will. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks once again to Will Rainey for sharing his story and the work that he is doing. To find out more about Blue Tree Savings and Will's book, head over to the show notes page on our website at theretirementcafe.co.uk, where you'll find some useful links. Remember that if you prefer to watch my conversations, you'll find them on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. That's Justin King MFP, along with a whole series of other videos to help you plan for and live a successful retirement. And as always, if you found this podcast helpful, please share with a friend or write a review to help more people like you find us. So until next time, I'm Justin King, helping you feel more informed in your retirement.